All right, so today we have the Spring of Sorrows, and I didn't even know that it was like coming out today, to be honest. But uh, yeah, first up, we have this Iron Fist boss. Now, when you think of Iron Fist, you don't think of like, you know, a defender or an attacker, really. He's just kind of there. But this boss fight, I, I guess it like it wasn't too bad, um, you know, and I think it's because like Iron Fist is such a joke defender So like there isn't really anything scary at base for Iron Fist It's just all the nodes like it's all just purely nodes based and with these like nodes Once you work around them this fight really isn't that bad in the slightest So what does this have? Well, the biggest thing here is the pressure gauge node. So whenever you hit the opponent, uh, this meter goes up by one. And if it hits 10, uh, by the way, it starts at five, right? So like doing a five hit combo, uh, it'll get you up to like the 10 charges. And that means you take a burst of like a lot of damage. It's pretty much all your health. But when it gets to zero after like blocking a hit or activating a special attack, uh, if it gets to zero, you get power drain. So the goal of the node is to like balance out your blocked hits and also like your basic attacks and your special attacks because you don't want to trigger the power drain in this fight especially because uh, there's encroaching root so every so often you're going to get rooted and to get out of root you want to drop a special attack however the power drain isn't that bad to get because even if you're rooted you can still kind of just bypass the root by just playing like kind of safely so it's not even the biggest deal to get rooted so the power drain isn't that bad to get just avoid getting the uh burst damage at all costs like do not do too many basic hits at once activate your special attacks and there's also a note where like if iron fist hits your block you gain power so you're going to be dropping a lot of special attacks and you'll be taking a ton of block hits as well so it's kind of hard to get like up to the 10 charges so you are pretty safe in this fight it's just the block damage is pretty vicious for most of these champions to be fair but yeah once you learn how to manage the pressure gauge node it really isn't too bad there's other nodes like ebb and flow heavy which isn't really that bad to weave in with like a normal play style there's also what else is there uh, the inexorable node where like whenever he hits your block he gains that uh, inexorable passive But that isn't really too harmful and I think it does actually help you because it like It keeps him close to you so you can just drop a heavy attack pretty like pretty easily because he's that close to you Even while you're rooted. So I think that uh, yeah, the nodes kind of help you in this matchup and honestly fair enough, right because pressure gauge is one of the most annoying nodes in the game and like this node combo like with all these nodes combined it pretty much makes pressure gauge a lot more manageable so besides pressure gauge the other main node is one where you can't gain buffs and iron fist cannot gain debuffs so like you pretty much have to use characters that only have passive effects so for example wong here now with wong what you want to do is you want to drop sp ones and you do this to build up your spells, right? And once your spells are like close to expiring, you wanna drop a heavy attack into the SP2, and then you're gonna do some pretty nice damage output, but not only that, you're gonna refresh your spells as well. So yeah, I started with the blue spell, then I dropped two SP1 to get like my max spell charges for the blue one, and then I got to the SP2 because I was like close to losing the spells, and the SP2 refreshes the spells for me, then I go for the SP1 again like three times for the orange spell, then I drop the SP2 one more time, and I top myself up, I drop the SP1 a bit more for the green spells, and then I drop SP2s, and the SP2s just end the fight. So yeah, that's like the game plan with Wong here. Uh, Wong is like one of the safest options for this matchup, just straight up, because uh, Wong doesn't get stopped at all by like any of the nodes. And not only that, uh, he's just one of the safest champions in the game in these long fights because of his regen with the green spell. So yeah, once you're built up, it's just like, it's just time to do crazy things and Wong is a pretty crazy champion like <laughs> his damage outputs honestly insane but yeah this matchup is essentially over now because Wong is built up and 
he's just gonna destroy him now at this point but iron fist here is being a bit annoying with like a special attack but that's okay i just spam my heavy attack do twenty-seven thousand crits and yeah some nice energy damage there and some nice just like healing as well he is a very very safe character like i said so yeah we're chilling here i dropped the sp2 again the protection's up which is kind of annoying but we <laughs> we still did some pretty good damage there to be fair and yeah this matchup is essentially over uh here i go for the sp1 protection up doesn't matter because he is still down and yeah that wasn't too bad in the slightest but now we have the final fight here we have this jessica jones and uh jessica jones so of course she's like a paywalled character and i do feel bad for showing this but i kid you not i don't think there's a better option for this objective like i'm sorry it has to be jessica jones or else like maybe a quake but i don't want to like make y'all have to do that so i'm just saying if you have this champion somehow uh you're in a good spot because she is the best for this objective by far uh you have i guess like maybe silk can do it but like it'll be very slow uh who else could do it um i guess like any of the spider-man characters but i think it really has to be uh jessica jones if you have her but i think miles morales if he's actually size small could be pretty good as well um there's not like too many like science characters that are one small and two like don't rely on a ton of debuffs right uh jessica jones here she's all passives like she is all passives um her fury is passive of course she does want to have like debuffs inflicted on the sp1 but that doesn't even matter because she still builds up investigation passively so once you get to the sp2 you still get your five furies and they still hit really really hard so yeah she's honestly great for this fight I don't think there's anyone better. I mean, maybe Invisible Woman could do something, but like even she wants the fragilities as well. So it's like, it's pretty much Jessica or Bust, man. I'm sorry. Like, I'm genuinely sorry, but I just, I had to use her, man. She was my best option. But yeah, this damage output from Jessica is just really, really clutch. Um, her like furies are really potent. She's doing 27,000 mediums, uh, doing some beefy heavy attacks, and this matchup is as good as over at this point. So here I go for another heavy attack. I drop the SP2, and no crits yet, but there's a nice 25,000 crit, and it's just showtime again, man. She is just crushing it. And look at this damage, like over 50,000 damage. It's it's unreal, and it's crazy how like. Uh, the spring of sorrows fight is kind of paywalled because like she is the best option for this objective by far so it's like dang man that's uh sure but that's like my guide here for not like guide but i guess like just a quick walkthrough of the solos uh the fight itself isn't too bad once you manage pressure gods you are honestly chilling it's not too bad of a fight uh and just use characters that have like passive effects for example jessica jones long torch but yeah let me your thoughts on this first spring of sorrows fight and yeah that's about it for me